changing to a great from a small. Here's the question. Jesus said to the disciples, hey, let's feed the people. For the disciples said, Jesus, let the people go. You've been teaching too long. Applebee's is still open. <laughs> the stores are still open. Let them be released so they can go buy food. That's what the text says. Mm -hmm. Here's the first point. As leaders and pastors, we have to stop releasing people back to resources. Mm -hmm. Keep them connected to the source. Amen. Jesus is the source. Mm -hmm. Their financial prowess, their education, their families, their comfort zones, right. that becomes their resources. Right. And the disciples say, Jesus, right. Let them go so they can go do what they usually do. Right. But Jesus said, no, keep them connected to the kingdom source. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom source will find a way right. to meet their needs so there's no disconnect. Right. So one of your headings could be no disconnect. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges with ministries is there's a disconnect. Yes. Some of y'all can testify. I know they're testifying about it here at FAI at my church. And that is people are trying to stay connected to what drew them to the church. Right, right. People will join the church because they love the pastor's smile, they love his words, they yeah. love his energy, right. they love his personality. Right. Oh, but when he meets the leaders, right. the leaders create disconnect right. from right. the kingdom concept. Right. So now people fade away right. because they feel disconnected. Don't disconnect them. Keep them connected. So then Jesus throws it on the disciples and says, what do we have in our business treasury? Right. We only have enough to feed about 2,000 or so. When we say 2,000 and 5,000, we say in families. So y'all know that. <clears throat> That's 5,000 men, which means we're talking about 23 to 24,000 people. So now, what do we have? Enough to only feed almost half the crowd. Jesus knew what he was going to do, so he did what? He took the little boy's lunch. Which means sometimes Jesus will allow you to see what's in your resource ability. Uh -huh. To see how limited you are. And some people in some ministries and some businesses will get so excited about the fact that we have enough. Right. Just enough. But it's not enough to meet the need. But we'll brag on we got this many members and we got this amount in the bank and all that stuff. But it's not enough for what God has called you to do. You're excited because you got 200 people, 100 people, 400 people. You're excited because you have 400 or $400,000 sitting in the bank as a cushion. You're excited because you're doing such and such. When the Lord is saying, but I've called you right. to reach 5,000. But we'll get satisfied based on what we have. Right. When the Lord says, no, what I'm getting ready to do, I have an intention to reach more people. So we can't allow people to not be connected to Christ because of our low expectations of ourselves. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So now Jesus takes the little boy's lunch. Right. I understand little boy's lunch. It represents, no deep revelation, it represents a little boy's lunch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go into that kind of time. A little boy's lunch also represents Jesus is getting ready to take, I hope y'all catch this. He takes an immature meal yes, yes, out of the hands of an immature person to get ready to meet needs for mature men in their family. Ooh, wow. Are you catching that? Yes. So the reality is the Lord knows how to work with immaturity. Yes, he does. Just give it to him. Yeah. Right. Look at everybody like, well, he ain't talking to me. Yes, I'm talking to everyone in the room. That's right. That battles in some areas with immaturity. That's right. But because we're so good with trying to mask right. and cover up. Right. Cover it up. Because we want to present to the people. Now you have to make sure while you present to the people, you also got to make sure what are you presenting to God? Right. When it says I desire truth on the inward parts, yeah. in Hebrew that means I desire truth in the places that only me and you know about. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's so the right. honesty is, give it to the Lord. That's right. This is the best you can do. Don't study Bishop Jake's plan. Right. Don't study Joel Osteen's plan. 
Don't study your favorite preacher's plan and then come home and say, we're going to do this. That ain't your plan. Right. <laughs> Lexington ain't Dallas. That's right. Me and Pastor Jamal Bryant was doing a conference. Uh, this was some years ago. We were in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma with a pastor friend of mine. And we did a conference there, and it was a lot of us that preached on that night. I mean, you had uh, uh, all these preachers preached on that, that whole week. And the pastor was sitting there, great church, and he was just kind of down, because he was like, man, I feel like I should be doing more. He was only like five years old at the time. I feel like we should be doing more. The church was packed. It was a 300-seater. It was packed. He was saying to himself, man, I need to be doing what y'all doing. Jamal said, first of all, you're in Oklahoma City. I'm in Baltimore. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll forget what God has mm -hmm. called us to do and get into somebody else's success mm -hmm. and bring their plan to our strategy mm -hmm. and wonder why it ain't working. Make sense? Yeah. So now when you start talking about the immaturity, mm -hmm. in Christ's hands, he makes it mature by doing something that we can't handle. Right. One time I preached a sermon at our church, and the sermon title was Not Enough. Mm -hmm. It's just enough. Mm -hmm. More than enough. Mm -hmm. Sound churchy, don't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't preach it at your church because that ain't they, they'll be like, nah, that's that's too churchy. <laughs> Not enough. Uh -huh. It's just enough. Uh -huh. Jesus as a businessman says, I'm not gonna use what probably could almost meet the need. Wow. I'm gonna use what definitely could not meet the need. Which means this is not a business proposal or a, a ministry opportunity about being able to do it. Right. This is about trusting God with the plan that he has that's called blessing and break. Right. Mm. How do you change stuff? You got to have the courage enough to right. bless it and break it. Right. How do you change stuff? Come on, business people. I'm teaching from a business perspective. Right. The word bless is the word eulogy in Greek. <laughs> when he blessed it, mm -hmm. it's that word lulegeo, which means eulogy. It means to speak well of it. That's right. So he took the little bit, and before he broke it, he spoke well of it. He said, you know what? You are so awesome. <laughs> he didn't speak on how little it was. He spoke on how great it was. Mm -hmm. When you eulogize people, usually it is at the death. Yes. And you speak of how great their life was. That's right. But he spoke the eulogy over it before he even gave it to God. That's right. <laughs> Same thing that happened when Jesus got baptized. Heaven opened up. What did he say? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. How you pleased And he ain't done nothing yet. <laughs> you got to learn how to speak over now what's going to happen 10 years from now. That's not just declaring stuff. That is saying you've already done a good job. He blessed it. Other version says he thanked God for it. The word thank, it means in Greek to expressively give gratitude toward. Which means you got to learn how to get excited about your plan at the small stage. You got one staff member and one choir member, get excited. That's right. That's right. My current pastor, who's Pastor Ronald Logan, who's still my pastor right now, back in 94, when I was the minister of music of the church, the praise team was his wife. The church administrator, <laughs> one of the deacons, and another minister at his church. And only his wife could sing. <laughs> the drummer was my foot. The worship leader was here. And the musician was here. Had a boom stand. And I had to lead worship and keep the rhythm like this. This is 94. I had to speak well. I came from a church that had a band. My point is, we had to learn how to celebrate what's going to happen before it happens. We had to believe in it and speak well of it before it even came to pass. Are y'all catching that? So now when you start talking about Jesus takes it and he blesses it and he breaks it. Blessing it, eulogize over it. Thanking God for it, express gratitude and excitement over it. 
He ain't even done nothing with it yet. Now, the breaking part. It gets challenging, pastors, because the breaking process, hear me leaders, it always breaks you before it breaks them. It always breaks your heart before it breaks their heart. And if you really, really did it like I did it, it always breaks your pockets before it breaks your pockets. When I started FAI, I came off the road very successful, evangelizing and doing the music stuff. I'm not going to tell you my business, but I was making great money <laughs> on the road every week. It was good, and I was doing what I love to do, and I had fulfillment. Came off the road. I did not take a salary from the church, and I was not going to take a salary for the first five years, which means technically I would have still not been taking a salary right now had my church not forced me to do it. Mm -hmm. Anthony was there. They they forced me after two and a half years to take a salary. I didn't know that when we first started the church, we were going to have, in our first year, just doing Thursday night services only. The first year, before we even started the church, we did Thursday nights only. And in that Thursday night only, we had, contribution statement was $98,000 <laughs> in the account. After one year doing Thursday nights only. Lord. And I'm looking, they like pastor. I'm like, I didn't even take up offering the first month. I ain't let nobody join the church for the first six months. So folk was giving and they weren't even a member. But because the work, I had no praise team, no band. I walked in there, I did what I'm doing right now, and people just kept coming. Amen. I also started the church in the suburbs of Cincinnati. I made it so hard for folk to come. <laughs> I mean, you had to mean to be there. <laughs> Here's my point. Every year we kept growing. Finances kept growing. Finances kept growing. Next year, we was at $203,000. <laughs> Here's my point. I was the highest giver for the first two and a half years. I was the highest giver. What was I giving off? I was giving off my savings. All the money I made on the road. I was living and giving off my savings in the highest giver. And Lucretia can tell you, we got some folk out of church, including Lucretia, that got some money. <laughs> I was the highest giver. I'm not bragging, I'm making the point. I had set myself at a place of sacrifice. You got to be the first partaker of the breaking. If you want people to not have a, I mean, when I say they forced me to get on salary, because they seen me financially continue to keep doing what I was doing. And God kept making a way. He kept doing it. He kept sending people. He kept making a way. Here's my point. Jesus blessed it, then he broke it. It means to tear asunder. Business folk, pastors, you got to learn how to tear it asunder. I can, I can now see you all because I told my church. We had a great first four and a half years to start. God has blessed us so wonderfully. But the plan that we had, the system that we had, and the structure that we had. I had a wonderful service by myself about a month ago. And I took our entire plan and threw it in the fire. Mm. <laughs> it worked good enough to get us here. But I kept telling my leadership staff, if we keep talking about what we did to get here, we're going to stay here. But you can't do what you did to get here if you want to get there. Because most people, they get excited about here. And they forget about there. And God has said, no, 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 no. We got to go further than this. So he tore it asunder. He broke it. He tore it up. Another reference.